all the Lions. Good morning once again. My name is Cheryl Librado, and um, our group today is proud to present a unique and one of its kind, first of its kind business here in Ottawa that has a significant effect on our target customers. So we call our group the Executive Lunchbox. I am the CEO of the company, and with me, uh, our Chief Finance Officer is Sunil Munsinghi, and our Chief Marketing Officer is Rose Ainemi. So let me help you go through with this, with the current situation to help you understand what is our business all about. So Ottawa is the capital city of Canada. It is the home of the government's national capital region. And with that, uh, it housed around 90,000 office workers working in downtown alone. And it's these office workers, they are busy, they are always on the go, and most of the time, they don't have time to prepare lunch from home. And it's noted that 75% of them go out and buy lunch at random food stations, and they spend around an average of $14, up to $25 a meal for the day. And since they are working longer hours, lunch is a necessity for them. And lunch, aside from, from, from rent, mortgage, and uh, childcare, food represents a big chunk of their expense. Please take a look at this picture. This one shows that this is the typical uh, choice of uh, food stations that workers go. They're not so fussy about high quality, and they are cost conscious, budget-wise, and they just want to have a satisfying and a decent meal for lunch. So our company have come up with this brilliant solution. Um, we want to reduce the cost of their food expense, especially their lunch. From $300 spending in a month, we're gonna reduce it 35%. So from 300, it's gonna go, we're gonna offer a product that is $200 per month or a savings of 1,200 in a year. We're gonna offer complete lunch meal packs, delicious and satisfying. It's gonna be in a subscription meal package and it's gonna be a prepaid and a direct debit. It has five menu options in a day. The menu options would include beef, pork, chicken, fish, with a side dish of noodles, rice, and buns. It will also have drinks. So we have these benefits to our customers. We offer convenience because it will be a prepaid, they don't have to pay all the time. Um, financial savings of 35%, and also there will be a guaranteed satisfying meal. For the company, we will have a predictable income since it's a subscription meal package. For this one, we are seeing a 90% redemption because some of the customers, like 10% of them, were out in a meeting or on a holidays, so it will be guaranteed they were only 90% uh, redemption rate. So it's an extra income for us. And you're gonna have a payment in advance. So how does this uh, business work? First, we're gonna have a website online. Our customers were gonna go there and register. They're gonna pay, and once their payment is done, they will receive uh, an email with a, with a barcode. And after a week, they're gonna receive a membership card. The card is non-transferable, and it has a photo of the member so that we can identify them. They will present this card when they redeem their lunch for the day, and it will be one time. And our system will track that. Once their uh, validity date is almost to expire, it's also gonna be automatic renewal. Unless our customers will say they don't wanna continue or they're gonna stop. So we have three meal packages. We have a one month subscription, which is $200. That would be a total of 20 meal packs because since we're serving only uh, working days, Monday to Friday, a uh, two-month subscription is $380, and we also have a three-month subscription, which, which is $540, or 60 meal packs. We will serve walk-in customers as well. Their price is higher, and it will be at par with most of the, like the average spending, $14, and our aim is to get this uh, walk-in customers and to be one of our members eventually. So this will be our sample menu. We have a salad. It's really satisfying. 
and this will be our food truck concept. Now I want to give the floor to our marketing officer to discuss the marketing analysis. Looking at the market, Ottawa is a commercial and industrial booming capital city of Canada. It is estimated that there is around 90,000 total number of office workers in downtown area of Ottawa. And of these 90,000 workers, 75% don't get lunch to office. And of these 75%, the 5% will be our own target customers. Looking at um, the competition in the market, our main competitors are the quick service restaurants like um, the Tim Hortons, the KFC, the Chinese, the Sharma, and Greek, and the mall, the food courts, the other restaurants around downtown area, and of course, the food trucks. Literally, we have no direct competitor because um, Executive Lunchbox is um, a subscription base, which is a new idea. Nobody's doing that. Since there is an existing food industry, how do we, the executive lunchbox, penetrate this market? So we came up with our marketing strategy, which is first, we have a three-month pre-launch campaign. And this includes the Facebook ads, the LinkedIn ads, and businesses. Like we we'll use, we'll share our flyers from businesses to businesses through workers. We we'll offer 10% discount on the first 100 persons that subscribe to, um, to our food. Then we'll have branded merchandise for the first 100 persons, like bags, t-shirts, mugs, and we'll also have a giveaway month pass to promoter based on referral. We also came up with our four Ps, which is the product, promotion, place, and price. The product, which is our, um, our unique selling proportion will be our lowest price for the lunch meal without sacrificing on the quality of the food. We are going to base our promotion on social media because most of, most of the workers are found on, they are, everybody has a Facebook account. So, and every, most of the workers also have LinkedIn account. So we are going to do an aggressive marketing on the social media. Then we are going to do the direct marketing, like business to business, door to door. Also our website. We are going to have a website where all our informations will be there. When they log in, they go in, they can read everything about us, our goals, our mission, and everything about Executive Lunchbox. The price, since we are based on subscriptions, we have no direct competitor. And our marketing goals are to get 5% of the total lunch eat out market within five years in Ontario as a whole. 15% growth rate year on year, and also to make sure that our brand, the executive lunch box, is the number one brand for the lunch customers. That anytime workers think lunch, they think executive lunch box. Also, to have a high customer loyalty, satisfaction, and retention, and also to expand to other regions in Canada. I would like to call on Sunil, our CFO, to take you through our financial plans. I would like to start my financial with the startup cost of our business. So we have planned to incur $135,000 toward the startup cost, which is 75% uh, of the cost, which is 100,000 goes to the food truck and the refrigerator. Our next considerable part of the cost is for beginning inventory valuing $16,000 to start the process. When we talk about initial investment, our financial investment is $135,000, which is invested by all of our group's founders. Each member is contributing $45,000 cash, and therefore each member entitled of 33% equal ownership of the business. When you talk about the revenue, our anticipated revenue for the first year is around $850,000, and the total quantity sold will be 3,200 units. The revenue figure shows that there's an increasing of the quantity sold every month, except the months of August and December, due to the fact that there will be a slight drop in summer, and the 20% sales drop is expected in Christmas season, because most of the people is going away over the, you know, the Christmas season. So we are expecting 15% 15, 15 sales growth for the next two years. 
In summary, break even means at the point when the total expenses equal the total revenue, at which point the business make neither a profit or no loss. In our analysis, break even sales in dollar value is 470,898, which means when we hit this revenue figure, we are in break even point. Therefore, after this point, the difference between the revenue and the total cost is our profit. According to our target sales, we will be able to achieve this in the seventh month of our operation. When it comes to break even in units, when we make 1600 units of sale, we are in break even. Our cash flow and balance sheet proved cash to be the most prominent asset owing 214,000 at the end of the uh, end of cash balance at the December 2020. 2020 projected income statement shows the sales revenue of $851,524. Cost of goods sold is $350,561 and we have a good gross profit ratio which is 58% for the first year of operations. After deducting operational expenses, $253,580 net income will be achieved which is fairly a good figure in the first year. We have a net profit margin of 30%, which is the average standard of, of in the food industry. Assuming 15% increase of our present operation, we will be able to reach 300,000 annual profit range in next two years. So now, this is why we, we, we are here, why our business exists, because our mission statement is to be the number one lunch provider in the location in which we operate. We do it by offering a good quality and satisfying food at a significantly lower price. We emphasize savings, value of money, and convenience to our customers. So to recap, the benefits that we offer to our customers is convenience, 35% uh, savings, and a guaranteed quality meal to satisfy their day. And for our company, um, we will have a predictable source of income. We will have a steady flow of customers. And our business is unique. And I believe it is profitable. Thank you. OK, I really like your idea. I want you to know, I also really like your logo. I think it, com it, like, it com immediately explains what it is, okay? So good for that. Um, I think one of the things that immediately stuck out for me was when you were listing the different types of food, you, didn't men you mentioned all the meats and no vegetarian option. Be aware of that, okay? That there are vegetarians or vegans or p even people with gluten issues be aware of that and you don't want to lose the market simply because of that and if, even if i am a meat eater i might want to have a veggie meal once in a while you know what i mean be aware of that and like highlight that too i think um your business is great because and one of the first things i wrote down is how are they going to compete with uber eats with <laughs> and i think the main thing that you need to consistently point out is that not only is it quality but it's the healthier option and you mentioned that when you showed the picture of the food court you're like those companies that get those types of foods to me it's not it's not the healthy benefit it's not the healthier choice so you need to consistently point that out i think um, you said you have 10% discount. How long is that going to last? You said it's the first 100 um, customers, but how long is that going to go? Is it going to be forever? For the first six months of our production, we are going to use that to, to get customers so they can sign up and subscribe to our product. So I may I already buy boxed meals for home because I don't have enough time to actually cook when I get home. So I already have a food delivery service that comes to my house every week and drops off 20 meals for me so that I can eat when I get home. I immediately went to the Uber and Skip because um, we use it as a corporation. So I'm wondering why you're looking at not leveraging the kind of home delivery model within a corporate setting and saying, you know what, James, you own a business, you've got 22 employees. For a corporate subscription, I'm going to deliver 12 meals to your office so you can get productivity gains from your employee base for them not leaving to go to a food truck for an hour to get out of the space. So I'd wonder, I'd love to get your thoughts and commentary around the, that corporate angle that perhaps can be exploited. And my other question, kind of a big one, is who's cooking the food? To answer your first question, 
we were looking into that for our initial stage because this business idea is uh, is new we're gonna start up with a food truck first and once we have established like around 20 customers in one office that is the time that we can offer delivery but it's now we don't know how many but once we get like around 10 or 20 we will do del yeah we're gonna offer delivery for your second question, we will have a chef. We will hire a chef that will make our food. We will have a separate, uh, we're going to rent a space that will be our production storage area. All right, as a follow-up to this, um, I was looking at your startup costs, uh, 135000 or so. Um, uh, and looking at the breakdown, I think about only about 50000 of that should be upfront up up costs. Uh, because the, the kitchen, the storage, and the truck could be rented. You don't need to buy these things, especially if you're you're trying the market at first and you may do, you may use Uber Eats as a delivery service. You may be doing corporate and all these things. So instead of like incurring significant cost on buying equipment, you can rent those. And I, I know uh, some restaurants that were starting off and they rented kitchens. And uh, so that gives you time to figure things out for the first year or two, and then you may your model may change, right? And that gives you the flexibility. And also, how are you going to raise one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars to get started versus a fifty thousand dollar initial investment? That's a big difference. And that's more of a comment, I guess. But as part of a discussion, perhaps with you guys, the, uh, the question I'm asking whether it's one thirty-five or fifty with a rental, how are you going to raise that money? I looked in the market to rent out the truck. It co the cost is 2,500 per day. So that's why we thought uh, 57,000 is uh, the brand new truck. It's uh, all equipped. That sometimes if you have a rent a truck, we had to put some more in equipment there. So that's why we thought. But <coughs> I I appreciate your comments. So we'll go for that one. We can go for a bank loan. If you want to use a bank loan, do you have collateral to support a loan of this size? Sorry, I just want to add, uh, for a bank, you maybe uh, be eligible with BDC to, to start. And then we, we're going to enter later on uh, once you have revenues. You said that um, you mentioned the percentage, 35%. It's great because it's great to present it with a percentage instead of numbers. Um, it's very impactful. Uh, the marketing strategy, I loved it. Just one thing, the 15% uh, of uh, growth uh, is usually the percentage by default used by educa educational programs. So maybe you can be more specific on you know, the, how you're going to achieve it and maybe with another number than 15%. Um, okay, questions now? I still don't get the, um, the model, like how does it work? You're going to collect first a subscription fee, right? And then like, what is the timeline to redeem the lunches for me as a customer, for example? And secondly, do you have any consolation policy? So I just want to see like the same thing for the stickiness of the contracts uh, of the subscription. And Rose, you mentioned since it's based on subscription, there's no direct competitor, uh, so I, I don't get it. I, like, you, you do have direct competitors in the market, so I just want you to comment on that. And lastly, so for the walk-in customers, how does it work? You know, the, the three subscriptions? Okay, so since we have a subscription package, once you paid, so automatically you can redeem. You, like your start date, if you pay on the, on the first month, on the first day of the month, Automat automatically on the second day you can redeem your price so that's if it's one month from february 1st to february 28 whatever that's your one month subscription you will receive like a like a barcode that you can use to redeem if you did if if you don't have your card yet but we will make sure that you will have your card within the next three days and you can just claim it that's good for two months so and then the three month subscription that's good for three months with 60 launches that's how it works. So yes, you look at the 20 lunches, for example. So I run a business, I buy lunch probably two, three days a week. I go out for lunch. You know, one of the concerns I would have is that I'm buying 20 lunches at $14 a lunch. I'm actually only using 60% of those lunches. So my actual cost savings are negated immediately because I'm not using it. So do you have a, a thoughts around how you can manage that? Is it 
weighted. So most people get 80% of the days and it's an 80% of the cost. Or is it, if I don't use the lunch, I can give the card to my wife to keep her fed. So maybe you can comment on that. Just to add to what he's saying, like, does it roll over? So if he doesn't use the 20 in the month, do I still have the difference? Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you have something like that, it's even more interesting because I'm going to continue staying with them because I'm like, I'm not losing my money. The reason why we, we do it on a subscription basis is that our target customers are those who do not bring lunch at work. And for you, if, for example, if you only buy two or three lunch per week, you may be under the category of our walk-in only. And our card is not transferable, so you cannot give it to your colleague if you want him to avail of your lunch for the day. The working customers are just um, people like who go to the regular restaurants to get their lunch during lunch hour. Since they are not on our subscription base, yeah. so we just consider them like normal and we sell the normal regular price. Our customers can cancel one week before their expiry date. So by that time, we can cancel and we're just going to not auto debit their account for the next month. So um, I'm thinking about your uh, your segmentation. I think it's, uh, you know, downtown Ottawa is a good start, a location with a truck that can work to experiment. I was kind of wondering, as, uh, as we were talking here, uh, I'm not sure if the... You know the, uh, the the cost saving of the of the meal is a real selling point. Uh, I mean, it can be, it can be, but I don't think that's the, the the real pain point. I think it's really the quality of the meals downtown and the health issues. Like, and also it was mentioned, you know, gluten free and the, those specific diets that are concerned. Like people have to go maybe three, four blocks away because they they, they have a veggie meals there or or, or whatever. Or they can. You know, they don't want to eat uh, to eat uh, fast food and stuff like that. So I think that's the that's more of a pain point for workers downtown, especially uh, in and in, in everywhere. Um, so there's a convenience which you can work on, like having a specific truck and then perhaps partnering to do deliveries, which is an enhanced convenience, perhaps with businesses and stuff like that, like James mentioned. Um, I think you have flexibility on pricing. The subscription, like if you buy more, then you can get you know a lower price. I think that's a great retention mechanism. But um, I, I don't think the focus is really on the on the on the pricing itself. I think I don't think that's a super because people are still gonna they're gonna eat anyway, right? They're still gonna spend the money. Well, the, you can get what you need to eat and what you want to eat for the same price. At, if you have to go like ten blocks away and where your meals are all planned and you just go to the truck and pick it up, that's convenient and healthy. I think that's that's more of a sales pitch. Um, first year. You made some profit, net income, two hundred fifty-three thousand fifty-four actually, uh, withdrawals of fifty-four thousand already. So for three of you, eighteen k per person. You just invested forty k per person. Like sometimes for banks, we we need you to to keep the money and not withdraw already the first year, uh, for a good image. Well, I have some questions more around the fact that it's a regulated industry. So we're talking about food service. So there are huge liabilities tied to, well, the insurance side, food inspection agencies, making sure you've got the regulatory and compliance. So the one thing I haven't seen reflected in that is, you know, insurance is going to be expensive. Making sure you've got protections around that, both for the vehicle, both for the food production facility, for your chef, you've got all the training costs, the upkeep costs. So there's just one thing that I didn't see reflecting in the in the costing of the business. Those risk factors, uh, particularly with prepackaged food products, is something that you probably want to look at into the business plan. Um, it only takes one unfortunate incident to undermine your uh, your business. So uh, just it's a comment as much as anything else. Final question again, just intrigue as much as anything else. So what's your waste plan? Because the one thing with food production, if you're prepackaging a menu, is you're always going to have waste options. So you're always going to have product that you're creating and you're not going to be selling because some days people are in the mood for fish, other days are in the mood for keto-friendly vegan chili. Um, so there's always going to be those so what's your kind of waste plan and what you're going to do with those products? Do you have any philanthropic ideas as to what you might do with that food? When our clients register online, we have questions there that they're going to answer. What's their favorite? What's their typical? What's their, what's their kind of food? What's their type? So we, 
with that information, we're able to estimate how many quantities of this particular menu are, are we going to prepare for the day. And we do not recycle food once it's, uh, once all the, our, once all our customers are served for the day, we're gonna discard it. We're not going to recycle it, definitely. So thank you so much, Lions. Thank you for showing up. Uh, we appreciate and honor you, and uh, uh, we look forward to continuing our relationship with you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay.